Welcome to Bob's SQR Grader. Today we're going to go over how to do the project Introduction to SQL. This is um, a grader that I wrote to grade your SQL for the next two projects. This is the home page. Log in. You want to log in to, uh, to the grader to be able to use it. To do that, your username is your first letter and your last name, your first initial and your last name. Your password is your seven digit Reynolds student ID number. This is not your Blackboard or my Reynolds password, your, not your email password. It is your seven numeric digit student ID number. Enter that and log in. You should be able to see your name in the upper right hand corner. Uh, if you have something else that you did not log in correctly. So to look at the projects, you notice there are several projects here. We would do the first four. Uh, introduction to SQL is the one we will do today. This is to help teach you and help you learn how to write SQL. We will be doing this based upon the ERD in our second project. If you go to the ERDs, you will see there's one for aircraft charter, fundraising event, sales order, uh, which is project three, employee, which is also project three. What I recommend you do is to set up a second page and open the ERD and leave it open on this page. It's not the exact same format as um, Visio, but it's similar enough. This is the many and this is the one. Come back to the grader. We go to the projects, introduction to SQL. There are 12 exercises numbered 51 through 62. We start with the first one. And this is saying, show the member number and name for each member. Now I assume you have already been through the other tutorials for SQL and you know how to use them. This tutorial is specifically to show you how to use the grader and to help you learn SQL. So this says show the member number and name for each member. Again, if we look at the ERD, we see member over here has a member num and name. So from the first tutorials, you know that we do a select member num. I'm going to misspell it here. B E R name from the member table. In SQL, we select the columns that we want. Also known as the attributes from the ERD. From is the entity, or in SQL speak, this is the table. And we click test. Notice we get an error message up here, invalid column name member number. If you need help trying to understand what that error message is, you click the need help button. Okay, invalid column name. Here's an example of a bad SQL and an example of good SQL. Notice here we had a space between department and code. There should be no space. We click the back button. We correct the change. We have member num, which is the proper name from member. Click test. And we see at the bottom down here, we have, this is the correct answer in the blue. This is what ours should look like. And this is what your query returned here. You notice everything seems to match up. We have the right number of rows. 
we have the right number of columns, we get points for that, and the data matches up. So we get all three of those right, we get three points. We click save. Now you want to click save because at the end, this should be a project that you did get grades for. Let's go to exercise 52. Here it is saying, I want all of the columns in the member table. We say select. We could do star or asterisk from member. Click test. And we see the data. We get all the columns, all the rows, all the data matches up. That's good. We click save. And we have three more points. And we can click on the summary over here, the last tab, and see how we're doing. We see here for exercises 51 and 52, the value was 3. And we got three for each one. For the next ones, we have none. So this exercise is worth 36 points. And so far, we've made a dent. Let's go back to exercise 53. Here it says select all the columns for those members in Virginia. Select star from member. Now, the SQL is not case sensitive. So, I can use uppercase, lowercase, or mixed case. Now, to limit the number of rows, we know from our tutorials that we do where. Remember, in SQL, these statements must be in the proper order. Select from where. Where state equal quote VA, not double quote, single quote, where state equal VA. Click test. We see the results are right. We have the right number of columns, right number of rows, the data is correct. And so we get three more points. We click save. I notice you can go back to previous exercises and your code is still there if you saved it. Okay, now we go to exercise 54. This is the same as exercise 53, but now we want to order by name. Here we use the order by clause. Select star from member where state equal VA. Order by spelling matters. Order by name. I'm sorry. Order by name. That's right. A test. Notice now, it's ordering by the name. This is the first character of the first name is C, F, G, H. So we have Chesterfield, Forest Hill, Glenside, Enrico, Huguenot, all the way down to Skipworth. So we took the same results and ordered them by the name. Notice our member numbers are now scattered because we ordered by the name. Again, we got three points. We click Save. What I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this, so I don't have to retype it. And Save. And we will now go to Exercise 55. Same as 54, but ordered by the name Descending. Again, we do select star 
from member for state of court VA, order by name, and ask for name, you put in DESC for descending. This will put it in the order of Z to A. Test. We got a good score here. And now you see it's backwards. Skip with Patterson, James Rivers, you cannot, all the way down to Chesterfield. And we have our three points. We click save again. We go to exercise 56. It says I want the cities first, then the names. Now it's probably good to retype this when you're first learning. Just so you get what I call muscle memory. And now we're going to order, I'm going to put this in uppercase so it stands out. Order by city, comma, name, D-E-S-C, descending. I want the city in ascending order. If I don't put anything, it defaults to ascending. Then my member name descending. Test. Now we see we have the city, Chester, Forest Hill, Glenside, Enrico, Richmond, 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 Short Pump. And when we, the case that we have duplicates or ties, for example, Richmond here. So the first sort says by city. And if there's any ties, the tiebreaker will be the name descending, or so skip, pat, James, or descending because it's a tiebreaker from Richmond. And we click save. Let's go to 57. 57 says, and we're going to switch to fundraising events. Which fundraising events have a meal of fish fry? So let's do something else. Let's do a little break here. I'm going to flip over here to my sandbox. Sandbox is an area we have just to practice with some SQL. There's no grade or anything. I'm going to do a select star from meal. Select everything from the meal table. I just run the SQL and it shows me the results. So we have fish fry is meal ID 404. Let's go back to our projects. Is it 57? So we only want meal ID 404. If we select everything from fun raising event, and I may have to go to my ERD, make sure I get the right spelling, the right name, fundraising event, meal ID. Where? Meal ID is equal to 404. Let's test. We have two events with a meal ID of 404. One is April 8th, one is April 7th. We click save. We now go to exercise 58. Fifty-eight. We are going to show the we're going to do a derived column. A derived column is a column derived from other columns. 
And does it make sense that we are going to calculate gratuity as the contribution time is 20%, which is 0 0.20. So we will say select asterisk from, I'll tell you what, let's not select the asterisk. Let's select event date description contribution. And then we're going to have derived column contribution times 0 0.20 as gratuity. Now the as gratuity part is saying because contribution times 0 0.20 doesn't have a column name, we will give it a temporary name of gratuity. And then the total contribution, and notice we can skip to another line here, and we can say contribution times, now here we go, we want the total, which is the contribution plus the gratuity, can be 1.2. That would be the total as total contribution from Fun raising event. I'm going to copy that just in case I make a mistake. We we'll test it. And now we have event date from here. We have the description of the event here. We have the contribution is 100. Contribution times 0.20 is 0 0.20 and the total is 100 plus the 20 which is contribution times 1.2 for that and we have that for each row in the table I will save that now let's go to exercise 59 exercise 59 we're going to use a date now. I want to select star from fund raising event where event date greater than. Now for dates, we put them in quotes. So we'll start with the month, the day, and the year. So let's start from fundraising event where the event date is greater than April 1, 2012. And again, the way we put dates in is we put them in single quotes. Quote, month, dash, day, dash, year, quote. Test. Look at the results. We have only those dates, I mean, only those events that have dates after April 1, 2012. We got our three point grade here. We save it. We go to exercise 60. Exercise 60 says, How many fundraising events do we have? Now we are going to use what we call aggregates. Aggregates give us the results of more than one row at a time. So to get the oh, I want all the events after. How many events do we have? We say count. Open parentheses, star, close parentheses. This is called an aggregate function. Count tells me how many rows we have. Click test. And, oh, I don't want the where. Wait a minute. Count. Oh, I'm in the wrong exercise. 
No, we did 59. My mistake. I'm going to copy this. We're going to go to exercise. I had the wrong exercise. Exercise 60. Count. Test. And I think we don't want the where statement. Here we have, I said we had five, and the answer is eight because I had the where statement in there. Take out the where statement. Notice we're missing a point here. And we do test again. Now we have the correct answer. And we do save. Exercise 61. How much are all the fundraising contributions combined? Before we did count, now we're going to do sum. Sum says add them up. Add what up? Add the contribution. So we select sum of the contribution from fundraising event. Hit test. 615. That's what we have. So we're good. Notice the grade doesn't care what we name the columns. Uh, in this case, I didn't name it anything. If I want to, I can call it total contribution. But the grader does not care what we call it. We click save. Last exercise. We could do many aggregates. We can select sum of contribution as total contribution, comma, we use comma to separate our columns, remember from the, from the tutorial, then we say count, star, as, uh, number of events, comma, we'll do average, of contribution as average contribution comma what's the largest contribution we do max maximum contribution and you can probably guess how to get the smallest contribution. If match is the largest, then you're right. Min is the smallest. Again, SQL is not case sensitive. Notice I have sum in lowercase. I can make it uppercase to be consistent. I have all my aggregates as uppercase. Click test. We have three again. It goes off the screen, but I can scroll and we can see that it is indeed the correct. I click save. Let's go look at the summary now. And we see we have 36 points value and 36 points is what we have achieved. I can now click Submit Project. Now once I click Submit Project and I confirm it, I cannot save my work. I, mean, I can save it, but I can't. Well, take that back. I have submitted my project. I cannot submit it again if I'm trying to say. That button is now grayed out. So that's all you have to do. That is how the grader works. Um, you can look at your exercises, change them. Remember the, the uh, if you misspell something, the need help is up here to help you. This, a few examples up here of some problems you may have. That should help you. Remember to keep your ERD open so that you have access to it. 
you can see how the tables are related and the column names. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed this and I hope this is helpful to you and uh, looking forward to everybody getting a perfect score on the introduction to SQL project.